This sleek and stylish little box is the Home Assistant Voice Preview Edition, a replacement for your Amazon Echo that runs fully locally, if you want to anyway. And so long as you've already got Home Assistant controlling all of your smart home gear, it can control everything in your house with just your voice. This little thing costs just £48, or £55 if you buy it from PyHuds, and is fully open source too. You can build it for just $13 if you want to DIY it, although most will want to just pick up this assembled and ready to use version for sure. Let's take a look at the hardware, and then I'll walk you through the setup and tweaks, and finally take a look at what this thing can do. Hardware wise, this is both pretty simple and wonderfully complex. Physically, you get a thin square box with two mic holes at the top, alongside a button and a rotary dial that feels beautifully reminiscent of the iPod Classic scroll wheel, except this one has a tactile, actually spinning wheel. On the side, you will find the mic mute switch, which is currently active, hence the red LEDs, and a big obvious red indicator on the side to show you that it is in fact muted. Although it is a software mute switch, more on the software layer. And on the other side, you'll find the USB-C port needed to power the thing, a 5 volt 2 amp power supply specifically, although I'll get back to that as well, and a 3.5 mil jack for an external speaker, should you want one anyway. On the bottom, you'll find a punch out for a Grove port. Grove is Seed Studio's open platform for external modules, people who designed this board, and their website has over 200 external modules that you can pick up. Everything from GPS modules to a formaldehyde detector. Yes, genuinely, there is a formaldehyde sensor, and amazingly, it's out of stock. Anyway, this is the first hint that this thing is a very much open source bit of kit. Taking the four just push in rubber feet out and removing four screws, you'll be able to take the top plate off. From here you can see the two microphones in their silicon covers and the USB selector switch connecting what I have to assume are the data lines to either the ESP32 or the XU316, which is the sort of onboard AI coprocessor. A look at the back of the board reveals the tightly packed components that make this thing work. You've got the Grove port on the right, the I2C version specifically, the ESP32 S3 that runs the show just to the left of that, and the XMOS AI chip above that. To the left is the 3204 AIC low power stereo codec from TI that can either drive the built in speaker that ejects sound at the top side, basically opposite the USB ports, or can drive the external speaker via the headphone jack. The most amazing thing here has to be the two fully labelled headers available at the bottom and middle of the board. The one in the middle offers 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 4 IO pins, and TX and RX for the ESP32. And the one on the bottom has ground, two RGB pins, and five more IO pins from the ESP, meaning if you really want to hack this thing, they've left you a lot of room to do just that, not just the Grove port. This amount of not just user-focused design, but maker-focused design is incredible and a sight for sore eyes when it comes to this sort of hardware. Imagine actually owning your own hardware to the point where you can fix it and tweak it to your heart's content. What a world that would be. Well, this is one small step towards that, and I'm here for it. One last thing I wanted to mention on the hardware side of things is the power situation. This board is specifically listed as needing a 5 volt 2 amp power supply, both on the website itself and on the device's sticker right on the bottom, and initially, that's what I was powering it with. But I wanted to do a quick power measurement, and for some reason my USB PD power supply I was using to power the board just fine, wouldn't power my little USB power meter, so on a chance I plugged in just a regular USB cable from my PC to power it, and to my surprise the board powered up just fine. 
Even when listening for the wake word and responding to commands, I never saw it break 250 milliamps, with the majority of the time spent between 100 and 150 milliamp uh, milliamps at 5 volts. I suspect that the 2 amp supply would be needed for driving an external speaker, or if you have any other devices hooked up, but for regular operation, at least in my little tests, you don't need that much to drive this thing. So, you've got your board powered up, what now? Well, the first thing to do is head to the add-on store and install Whisper and Piper, with the former being the local copy of OpenAI's speech-to-text model, and the latter being Nabucasa's own text-to-speech model. With those running, you'll then need the Home Assistant app on your phone and Bluetooth and location services enabled. The latter may be specific to Android, I, I, I don't own any Apple products to confirm if you do need location on for finding local devices like you do on Android, but either way, it will then show up as a discovered device in the Devices and Integrations menu. You can run through the setup process, which involves saying the wake word twice, that being OK Nabu, at least by default, although Hey Jarvis and Hey Mycroft are also options as well, and then set up what voice you want Piper to use. Naturally, I picked Alba, the Scottish woman. Now, the downside to having a wealth of customization is that something like this doesn't work all that well straight out of the box. There is a list of accepted sentences you can use. Things like turn a light off, activate a scene, timers, and even delayed actions to like turn a light on in five minutes, for example. But to be clear, this isn't a full AI assistant, at least not by default. The biggest catch I found was when trying to interact with the various entries like lights, because things like my hue light bulbs aren't just called bedroom hue, the actual entity ID is Philips Hue LTA, uh, LTA001 5DC53 D09 level light color on off. Catchy, I know. Even the more friendly name, bedroom.hueamb.bulb, isn't exactly usable either, and for some reason, even the more easy ones like Elgato Key Light and Elgato Ring Lights, it just really couldn't work with it. That is, until I went through and added aliases to the entities I know I want to control with voice. It's actually pretty quick and easy. Just head to the voice assistance uh, setting, uh, click on the exposed entries list, and then pick the device you want to add or sort of access easily. In my case, let's say that's the bedroom temperature sensor. Click on it and add an alias. For me, that's just bedroom temperature and bedroom humidity as well, and that's it. Now when you ask it, okay Nabu, what's the bedroom temperature? Bedroom temperature is 18.1 degrees C. It responds fine. Of course, the speed at which you get a response and the accuracy of that speech to text will all depend on what hardware you're running this on and which whisper model you're using. I'm using base EN on my Threadripper system with the HasVM itself having, I think, four cores available to it. I did try running medium, but it just wouldn't run, and small EN was maxing out all four of those cores with no remorse, and ended up taking some like 30 seconds just to respond, so base EN it is. That actually works pretty well, although the more Scottish that I get, the worse it performs. In my anglicised accent, OK Nabu, turn Studio Light 1 off. Turned off the light. And that works pretty well. In my Glaswegian accent, oh well, let's see. OK Nabu, turn Studio Light 1 on. Turned on the light. Now, as of writing this script, sorry, let me turn that off. Now, as of writing this script, <laughs> Uh, I have no idea what it will do when I actually film this, so if it worked, amazing! It did a few times in my testing, although it failed a few times, actually quite a lot as well, and if it didn't, well, there you go. Much like the voice-activated elevators, this is racist against Scottish people. Remind me to link the uh, comedy sketch I'm referring to there in the description. Either way, the slower and more clearly you can speak, the better the results you'll generally get with it. 
plus naming your entities or aliases well, which actually turns out means writing out numbers in word form, helps a hell of a lot too. Something like a timer is actually really cool as well. Okay, Nabu, set a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. Timer set for 1 minute and 30 seconds. Once it's set, the LED ring lights up and counts down. And you can actually you know, set more than one timer at once and add names to them, which is really helpful for cooking. Just add for pizza or similar to the command. But more so, you can then modify them or even just check on them. Okay, Nabu, how long left on the timer? One minute left. You can also add or remove time or even cancel it if you don't need it anymore. How cool is that? Should you want to know the weather, well, as long as you've got an exposed weather entry, it will happily tell you. Okay, Nabu, what's the weather? 7.2 degrees C. The only problem here is that despite the entity it's pulling information from having a forecast built in, the actual uh, data that gets exposed to the assistant is just the current weather, which means if you ask, okay, Nabu, what's the weather tomorrow? Sorry, I'm not aware of any device called weather tomorrow. It won't find a device called weather tomorrow, which as a very literal autist is quite funny to me. But there is a script that should be able to help, although I haven't been able to get it working too well personally. And there's the alarm. Perfect. Press the button to cancel. There you go. As I said earlier, this isn't a full LLM assistant. It's limited to the built-in sentences and commands that it knows what to do with. If you ask it a question like, okay Nabu, how long is one meter in inches? Sorry, I am not aware of any area called inches. Well, yeah, it can't help you. You can hook this up to an LLM, either cloud like ChatGPT or local with Ulama, with the latter being something that I'm actually looking to set up soon, as soon as I stick a higher VRAM GPU in one of my two NASes. So if you'd like to see a guide on that, well, let me know in the comments. But out of the box, it's a little more limited. But at least if you opt for the Whisper and Piper option rather than using Home Assistant Cloud, it is fully local. The XMOS chip in here is what's doing the wake word detection, and if your Haas server is doing the Whisper, the Conversation Agent, and Piper work locally too, then, well, no one needs to know how many times you turn your lights on and off but you. One final thing I want to point out is that it isn't just the hardware that's open. The firmware is just ESP Home, with the full source code being available in their GitHub repo. It's long, nearly 2,000 lines of code, but it's all there. If you want to, you know, mess with it, or, you know, add grow devices, or just see how it works, it's all here, out in the open. To be able to access literally the whole device, the circuit diagrams, the case files, and yeah, the entire source code is amazing. It's what I've done with my open source tools, but to see a bigger company like Nabucasa do it is fantastic. Although, let's face it, with the free and open source Home Assistant being their primary product, I can't say that I'm that surprised. Just pleased. This is a device that you truly own for a smart home solution that you equally truly own. So yes, this gets a glowing recommendation from me. It isn't perfect for sure, it's a little rough around the edges, and especially running it all locally does come with some hardware challenges and, well, even some response time challenges to a degree. But having the chance to have a fully local and therefore private voice assistant, even if it's just to control your smart devices, is amazing. I'm very pleased with this thing, and if you have Home Assistant set up, I would highly recommend you pick one of these up too. Of course, those are my thoughts and I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. Also, just as a note, I did buy this. This isn't, you know, a, a sample or anything. So I actually sometimes feel I'm more biased for the things that I have purchased, but either way, there's your uh, your disclaimer and it's always like, uh, 
mentioned in the description anyway but uh, otherwise like i said those are my thoughts i'd love to hear yours in the comments down below if you want to see more videos including uh, an olama setup guide with this uh, let me know in the comments hit the subscribe button all that jazz and check out plenty of other smart home videos on the end cards i'll leave the full playlist up there if you're interested otherwise that's pretty much it thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it we'll see you on the next video